you're through to books, boys. You've got Dean on the line. Who's calling? So, Stipe, is Ian on the line? Hi, Stipe. Thanks for calling in. Uh, we were actually just in the middle of talking about your wonderful book here, Echoes of the Past, which I have beside me. Um, how are you today? So, today I'm pretty, uh, feeling uh, pretty good overall. Good. Before I talk about the book with you, I noticed on the very beginning we have our story, book one. And I noticed at the end, it looks like, do I understand this correctly? This is going to be a kind of series. You have plans for two sequels and as well, there's going to be a couple of shorter books. Is that right? That is correct. So uh, Echoes of the Past is the first book in the Our Story series. Uh, the, the plot is uh, planned to span across uh, three main novels, so Echoes of the Past being the first, and uh, throughout the middle of uh, each novel, so once you're finished uh, reading Echoes of the Past, you have three shorter stories which are in the form of a sub-series titled Our Story Memories. Mm -hmm. And uh, subsequently, those two series are going along with uh, each other. Right, okay. So I see we've got our story memories um available on Amazon. We have um I need you to forgive. We have also Sean's story. Do not. So are those already out? Let him understand the the memories. Yeah. Uh, so in uh, the our story memories sub series, uh, those three books are out. Uh, okay. They are short stories. So uh, basically in the form of uh, short novelettes. So not novels, but novels. Fantastic. So if anyone likes this book and they read it, they can actually get more already, which is fantastic. Um, what's the expected date then for the next the next main installment? Now, since uh, Echoes of the Past is uh, a story, you know, which is uh, shaped by the choices you make as the reader, uh, the second book in this uh, trilogy will actually go off of the choices you made in the first one. Okay. Now, of course, uh, the expected release date, it uh, it was expected to, le to release even this year, but uh, there are, of course, delays in the writing process. Mm. And uh, since uh, the overall story has expanded, as I began writing the second one, um, it will be quite longer than first expected. And okay. uh, right now, the planned release date is in the beginning of 2025. So it's still quite a while back. Oh, wow. Okay. But in between, uh, yes, but in between, there will be one uh, one book releasing in the Art Story Memories subseries. Okay, so there'll still be something else coming, and we've got a few to start with. Fantastic. So I want to ask you, because it's not so common, what made you want to do this as a kind of, you know, like the old choose your own adventure, like the kind of thing where you get to make decisions that impact the story. Where did the idea come from to do that? So, uh, you know, ever since uh, I was little, uh, if you maybe remember, we have uh, some uh, children books, which are like shape your own story. Or yeah. Anything. And uh, basically an idea came up to my mind. Uh, we already have uh, alternative experiences based on television, and uh, games, uh, but in uh, books for adults, uh, I uh, really have not seen uh, someone attempt to make an adult novel or a large story, which is uh, meant for teenagers and adults, uh, which is shaped by the choices you make. So I, uh, I can afford to make a breach in that field, uh, since currently in writing form for, mm. for what I could have seen, it's mace, uh, mostly based uh, in the children's genre. Yeah, I mean, I've certainly seen those type of children's books. This is the first time, I believe, that I've actually read this uh, kind of book as an adult book. So and it was it was very refreshing. I liked it. Um, what is the main difficulty with writing this and actually making the choices matter? Was that something, obviously that was important to you, but was it something difficult? Uh, of course. Uh, so uh, once you read the codes of the past, uh, even though the main story is going in one direction, which leads you to the overall ending of the first story, uh, in the continuing books, 
and even those uh, three little short novelas in the form of our story memories, the choices you made throughout Echoes of the Past. So uh, either you sided uh, with a character named Sean or either you were there for Tobias, those choices will uh, have their effects in the Our Story Memories subseries. Uh -huh. And of course, uh, they will uh, lead to branching stories in the second main uh, book of the main series. Uh, now, of course, uh, you know, throughout writing it, it was uh, difficult to, to, to find a way to implement them correctly. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I have a set plan. Let's say I, I want the story to branch out in three directions. So we have direction number one, the, the middle one, and the last one. But as you're writing the first direction, uh, ideas come up to your mind, like uh, what if we can make this even more complex, such as in the form of small butterfly effects, which will come uh, into form later on. So mm -hmm. not in the first book per se, but later on, some of the small, maybe insignificant choices you thought you were making, uh, they will uh, have their meaning in some shape or form down the line. Okay, because in this book, you do get to make some choices, but as you say, the overall story is the same. So it's nice to know that those choices will still play into the, the continuation of the story. Um, there was one, though, and it seemed so insignificant that made me so sad. I, I failed to take a lollipop. And then when the little girl Sky was hungry, I had no lollipop to give her. And that was the saddest moment of the whole book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, that's, uh, that is an insignificant choice, let's say, in the overall meaning. But uh, even that small choice uh, in the second main book uh, will have at least some meaning in uh, in the narrative aspect when it comes to that character Sky. So how she views world later on so mm -hmm. if let's say she does receive the lollipops in the first book she still has that form of her childhood being intact but if she doesn't receive them she is uh sooner getting used to the new apocalyptic world before her right okay so unexpected consequences big consequences in a way yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, not uh, that particular choice, you know, it will not have a large consequence, but it will have a shape in how the, the character is formed. So yeah. uh, you you will have like two to three different versions of, of uh, Sky once you begin the second book. Right. OK, fantastic. So obviously... Our main story, so it's interesting. We are let's let's talk a little bit about about what's going on. We're set in a zombie apocalypse, and we have to make the right you know choices as we go. Uh, our main character, he's being released from prison. He was in prison. Hopefully, this isn't a major spoiler to the story, but he was in prison for having killed his wife. That's mentioned, and then it doesn't really come up again is that something that's going to come up in the sequels or do we just have to accept that that's in his past and we're moving forward uh of course uh, without spoiling for uh, the overall audience um in the first book as you've said uh that uh, plot line doesn't seem to really go anywhere once you reach the ending mm -hmm. but uh throughout the story uh, uh, if you remember, the main character had a goal of finding his son. Yes. Now, he is past in how he uh, murdered his wife. That will come to play out in the form of down the line when, let's say, something happens with that quest that mm -hmm. may or may not have been achieved in the first book. So, in the form of his son, that choice will uh, that story and that plot line will be further developed. Okay, so that will that will come back. Good. So our main our main character is Peter, and of course uh, he gets released from prison and then ends up in a coma. Um, but the interesting thing is the chap, the the prison officer who's releasing him, who's escorting him, Jackson, is actually a friend of his and will come back later in the novel. So that was an in an interesting thing to to write into it. Um, I didn't expect that, but Jackson's a bit of a tough guy kind of uh, as well. He's not, Peter usually is the one, at least the way I made my choices, Peter is the one usually doing the nice thing, and Jackson is very much of a tough guy, 
And of course, we have Sean, who's a bit of a tough girl vibe as well. So I don't know if that's what you expected, but I played my character as the nice guy to balance against the toughness of some of the others. <laughs> exactly like that. So uh, you can see that uh, basically uh, the main character, Peter, is throughout the first story faced with uh, two views of how the world is playing out. So you have Jackson, who has a tough guy view, and uh, he's very stubborn throughout the story. His, his uh, decisions that he makes are oftentimes seen, let's say, as irrational. Mm. And uh, his uh, view of things is uh, very harsh. Meanwhile, you do have a similar perspective coming from Sean, and uh, even though uh, those two characters did not come, let's say, into a full-on uh, discussion in the first one, their views, so how you come to react, should you side with how Jackson is going on about his choices in New World, or should you side uh, in uh, maybe a uh, passive uh, voice. So mm -hmm. in, uh, you also have the character, let's say, of uh, Ken Lee, who is yes, oftentimes the, gentleman. Uh, the the calm voice. So the 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 passive voice, which tries to seek reason and uh, not irrational, harsh decisions. So basically, is the choice which 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 uh, how do you want to act in the new world? So do you want to try have some resemblance of a normal life, or do you want to go full on? Let's adapt to, to, to our new circumstances and uh, not fully think about what we might uh, become in the long run. Yeah, and that's a theme as well. And of course, a difficulty, you know, as you say, it's OK, the world is being uh, taken over by zombies. Do we insist that we want to keep things the way we remember them and try to go back to that? Or do we just have to accept that everything's ruined and we have to try to find a way to exist moving forward? So that's interesting. And that, that some of the characters talk about those issues, which is great. Um, That's fantastic. So I'm going to ask you something that we ask to every, every author that we have on the show before we let you go. Um, if there's any book that already exists that you wish you'd been the person to write, so any existing book you wish you'd wrote, what would it be? Uh, now, my answer might surprise you a little bit because it's not a famous book, per se. Uh, it's called The Creatures of the Appetite. It's uh, also written by an indie author named Todd Travis. Okay. Uh, this is uh, more on the side of a thriller slash mystery and even bits of horror in there. Uh, this was one of the very first books uh, I've, uh, you know... Uh, read in depth, where I even tried to research some of the the thematics based mm -hmm. on the plot, and that story, at least in the first one, which is named Creatures of the Appetite, it you know it uh, it shocks you in how well it is developed and uh, how uh, how the writer has shaped the narrative. You know the ending, of course, blows you away. It's unexpected. It's kind of uh, one of those endings, you know, who done it? Who is the guilty yeah. culprit? Or, yeah, but uh, the answer you do not expect, and it blows you away. Fantastic! I googled it here. Yeah, it's only twenty thirteen, so it is quite a modern book. Uh, yeah, yeah, creatures yeah. of the appetite. Todd Travis, fantastic. Well, before I let you go, do you want to give us a plug for your website or tell people where they can buy the book or something like that? Uh, of course. So uh, most of my books are available throughout uh, my website. So uh, stipeluzina.com. But of, uh, you can find them on Amazon uh, and uh, Apple Books, uh, Barnes sure. & Noble, Langes & Robertson. They're uh, widely available. So we just search under the author's name and you should find most of my books. Brilliant. And I'll put a link as well in the show notes. Well, Stipe, thank you so much for calling in. Um... I enjoyed the book. I can't wait for the next one. I might have to read some of the shorter ones in the meantime. And uh, thanks for thanks for calling in. Have a great day. Uh, thanks for having me uh, having me as your guest, and have a nice day.